Hello, welcome. This is episode 34. I'm with Garage McDade. He is just taking the world by storm. He's Ireland's number one pro surfer. I've been studying footage for him of, of him for months now, and uh, his air game is just superb. Um, he's charging the biggest waves that I've seen lately uh, at Mulgamore, and um, he's with us today. Uh, Garage, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us on. Bro, so it's um it's a snow day as I see. How's it going? Today we woke up to a blanket of snow. It's not too often we get that here in Ireland. It's uh, it's it's cold, wet, windy and rainy all the time, but yeah, snow doesn't happen too often. So um yeah, it's pretty cool. The waves aren't great, but still pretty nice getting out there, going surfing in the snow. It's kinda of a bit of a novelty for us. So I had a little surf and went up the mountain to try uh make some snowman and stuff so yeah it was a bit of crack i i saw that on your instagram feed everyone needs to go follow uh garage he is just crushing it um daily so i saw the snowman and i saw a really sick air reverse you pulled a uh, full wetsuit it looked cold like how how do you do it uh yeah today was cold i mean we got a little window where the sun came out and that was the 10 minutes i put my wetsuit on <laughs> so i got pretty lucky and uh yeah the waves were pretty bad it was just my local little beach that we surfed today but um uh, yeah it was fun to get in and i didn't have that many good waves i surfed for probably 30 minutes and got one or two little turns did that little air and yeah that was me done i was out of there one one and done pretty much um and yeah it's not too bad you get used to the cold and stuff so yeah it's grand like it's it's what i'm used to so it's what i like well, well, bro, you've had a, a huge winter. I, I've seen so much footage of uh, of you just crushing Mogamore, paddling in. Uh, I think I saw some towing waves. Uh, now, I want to talk about the wave I saw last Saturday. Uh, are you allowed to say where that was? Well, uh, the one last Saturday? It, uh, uh, Kane, Kane, you posted it uh, from Kane Salmon from from Western Australia. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He had a drone, I believe. And I saw I saw a blank wave before I saw your wave on that carousel. And I was like, man, I, who who's surfing that? And, of course, you're out there and you got a huge barrel. Um, it, what's that? Are you allowed to say what that spot was? Or how was that session, yeah, yeah, I should yeah. say? Yeah, that that's Riley's. Like that's in it's it's not much of a secret spot nowadays. Everyone knows it. Everyone's seen it all over the internet. Um, but yeah, it's uh it's a sick wave. It's it's super heavy, super shallow, and that day wasn't perfect. The tide wasn't that high, and the period was super high, so uh made it pretty difficult to paddle. So we started towing a couple. Me and then my friend Connor from here too, and um yeah, we kind of. Towed a couple, had some fun, and kind of tide was really low, and the period was super big. It ended up just shutting down and going dry quite a lot on us. Um, so we had a couple of pretty sick visions when you're in like super thick, heavy pits. It's it's pretty nice just getting into them and seeing what it's like inside them. So it was a pretty fun session, and yeah, there was nobody else around. There was uh, your man Keen was there shooting for land and uh, Zach from Australia paddled out for 20 minutes to try to tr get a couple but yeah there was literally nobody else around so it was pretty epic yeah you you mentioned your friend uh Connor McGregor is he is he your tow man or are you guys just like charging bros yeah yeah well, like we both Connor surf super good and surfs Molly Moore everywhere as well and uh he's uh probably the best guy out there on on the biggest days so we'd like always surf together all around all around the world and every day here in Ireland and yeah then when it's big we we're, we tow together and it's pretty good having someone who's one of your good friends to be able to tow it like it just makes it fun and yeah keeps it interesting yeah I saw a wave he towed uh it was massive and and you you've also been been just pinning massive ones uh can you bring us to Mogamore tell us a little bit about the spot and and how how did you make your way into something so heavy? Yeah, I guess Molly is like it's I don't know, it's kind of it's different to a lot of other places in the world. It's like kind of it's not really a big wave, it's a big slab. Um so it's like a lot of the big wave spots, it's like you're riding like they're riding like ten O's and stuff with jaws and 
just like a lot of like obviously they're still getting mad bows and stuff, but like Mugmore just goes so square and so thick, it's kind of nearly like chokes, but kind of has a little lead in at the start to let you in to paddle when it's big. So that's the difference, I suppose. And uh, yeah, I guess here we have so many different slabs around the place that there is kind of stepping stones to get to surf and mulk more. Like we've got like fun little playful slabs, like kind of reefs that are like turns, you get little barrels and then you move to like another slab that's got like a little bit heavier and then there's another one that's a little bit heavier and then that breaks when it's bigger. And it's kind of like you have all these different stepping stones of getting out the mully, but um, yeah, when you think you're, you're ready and you get out there, it's, no matter what, it's scary. Like, I've had the best waves of my life out there, and then the next winter after a flat summer, the first day you're out there, you're shitting yourself again. It it all comes back, and it takes a couple of sessions always to get used to it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, I think it's the best wave in the world, and I'm, I think a lot of people think that when they come here too, and it it, uh, it keeps people coming back. But, um, yeah, it's it's mental. It's really good. Yeah, aesthetically, the side angle of that wave is just so beautiful. The green, and it's so uh, symptomatic to your your nation. And when when you see a picture like that, um, I, w- I want to know from from you, what's it like on the reverse? What's it like getting into that monster? And give us the uh, the feeling, the aesthetic of 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 that emotion. Uh the emotion of being in the barrel at Molly is it's pretty mental, like. You're in the barrel and it's it. You can see a photo and it looked like a perfect wave and all that, but there's so much goes on inside the barrel. You're like, start off, you have to pull up high into it and then it like kind of drops out and goes real square. And then you're at the bottom and then you have to pull back up and come up high to like kind of squeak out of them sometimes, depending on how they break. But yeah, there's a lot of actually riding the barrel out there. Like you have to ride it as if you'd ride any. Four, four, four to six foot barrel like it's uh it's definitely a special feeling and then when you get spat out of one into the channel and all the jet skis and everyone on the on the in the channels going nuts and stuff there's there's not really better than that like it kind of sometimes you can just go out there get one wave and i'm like oh i'm done that one that one did it for me for today like but you always end up what well, you get that for about 10 minutes and then you always want to go back out and get more <laughs> The, the dopamine just is is flowing. So, yeah. so you mentioned it's like um like chopes in a way and uh tiapu and I I've seen your footage that that you've you've gotten in contest. I, I look like at at chopes and the waves are very similar. And the, the when you look at them face on, they have that wrap and they they keep going down the line. Um, it, it, how how do the two compare? And um, when you went to to Chopes, were you like, you know, you're in your boardies. So did you feel an extra level of uh, resilience or tell us a little bit about that? I, I've actually, I haven't actually been to Tahiti yet. It's somewhere that it's been on my, oh, it's I- been on my, it's been on my radar quite a lot to try to get there, but I haven't been there yet. Um, but yeah. My apologies. Like- I must have re- misread the, the footage. It was oh, a video. Of- yeah. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I get like there's me. People will see whatever you surf in twenty waters at Molly and like like oh that's so scary. And then well, I go to like Indo and surf like a slab, and it's like four foot, but like scared because I'm in boardies. I feel naked. I don't have like the protection of uh, a wetsuit. It's it's mad. It's a weird feeling. Like I know a lot of people would be the other way around they're a lot more comfortable in boardies but for me i'd way rather be in a five mil hood boots and gloves surfing somewhere big than rather than in boardies because all i'm thinking about is i'm gonna get smashed on the reef i don't have my don't have the wetsuit to protect me so it's it's definitely different so tell us about your your trip to skeleton bay back in the summer when it was firing we we saw Lots of footage from lots of people, and that was just an epic, uh, epic swell covered on all accounts. But what you did in the in the barrel with your GoPro that I saw was just nuts. Like literally, everyone can look it up. Like it was like a three four minute barrel you took. Um, maybe there was like six barrels you were in and out. 
but like that that was amazing how how did skeleton bay kind of i guess um feel to you during that session yeah namibia it's it's a crazy place like i've been a couple of times now and like every time you leave it still leaves you still want more like you see those waves that like you're getting those crazy 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 long bows and you're like in and out in and out and yeah every every time i leave i still want to go back and yeah this that swell um it was pretty funny actually i i had my i was meant to be going to indo just a trip i booked a trip there for a month in indo and then this swell popped up so i just kind of changed my flight a day or two and flew to Namibia first um, and the first couple of days the bank was a bit weird and we had like heaps of fun while it was pumping but just not like that perfect perfect top to bottom like like three minute rides but uh, and then on the last day I was supposed to be leaving my flight was at like one or two in the afternoon so I was like kind of rushing to get waves in the morning I put my wetsuit on in the house and drove out the sand spot the sand spit and then um, Everyone else got there and they were like, oh, I think it's going to get better later, going to get better later. So there was like not that many people in the water. And I just paddled out like pretty much. Was, I only seen one other person in the lineup, like was Nathan Florence that morning. Everyone else was still on the beach and the wind was still good. It was epic. And I caught that that wave was my first wave and got it right from the top of the point all the way to the bottom. Yeah, I like got seven. Oh, yeah, I got seven barrels on it. And like it was a pretty big, big wave like for out there, like like six foot out there but um yeah i ran back up the point and everyone was like oh just looks like the wind's coming up and the wind was like the wind came up devil and then like real strong like side like up the point that never really happens and um yeah it turned out like everyone thought that was going to be the best day and pretty much nobody surfed the whole day other than like two or three of us that morning that were the first ones out there on dark. So it was, it was pretty, uh, it was worth the, the last, the last minute rush to get, uh, to get one before the flight out that afternoon. Incredible. Incredible. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, your, your small wave game is just as impressive as your big wave game. And I would like to know, how do you oscillate between the two? Because like, it's so hard to do those maneuvers that you're doing. They're so innovative. Um, but then when you go and you, and you charge uh, Mulgamore, it's like it, it, a lot of guys either do one or the other, you know, uh, very few people on the planet do both. Tell us a bit about how that is and how, how you go between the two. Uh, cheers. Yeah, I guess. I grew up in small ways being like really competitive, like, doing all the competitions around the world, all the pro juniors and the like QSs and stuff. And that was my like thing from being 10 years old onwards was just like competitive surfer, performance surfer. And um, I guess, yeah, it kind of just was just a natural thing of that was my main focus for so many years. And then being from Ireland, living here, you just, People are like, oh, come to Molly, come out for a look, we'll bring you out on the jet ski. And then they're like, oh, come have a look at this slab, like just paddle out and like that. And then it kind of is just a natural progression of living here and being around the guys who are just like so focused on like the big wave stuff that it like, I just like naturally veered towards it and started going out on the bigger slabs, going out Molly for a look at once in a while, got towed into a couple, on like not the biggest day went, and like, just kind of got a feeling for it then and I suppose trying to balance them is actually it's quite difficult to be honest because uh, a lot of times you're like oh there's a real big swell coming it's going to be like really good molly and then like I could have to like go away for a contest or something and you're like trying kind of gutted that you're missing it and then like trying to be there for the best days and like trying to balance that out is quite hard and then trying to stay on top like on top of your small wave surfing for going away to contest, uh, especially in winter here, like, like next month I go to Puerto Rico for the ISA Worlds. So it's like trying to stay on top of my like performance surfing and then whenever I can now, like today I was small at the beach, pretty bad ways and just try to go out and grind a couple out just to keep myself sharp. And then when the big days come, 
I suppose because you're surfing all the time, it, it benefits you that as well, that you're fit, you're ready. You're just, yeah, it's kind of how it goes, I suppose. But uh, yeah, it's difficult enough to try and balance it out. Uh, as you're you're getting older, are, is there a direction you're feeling like, like you see yourself just being like, after your your time on the on the pro tour might uh sunset are you like i'm going full into big waves is that kind of the trajectory of of things yeah like right now things are starting to veer more towards like free surfing heavy waves and that kind of thing but um it's kind of like going on trips for sponsors and all that to like chase the big heavy slabs like cold water slabs and it is kind of the way things are going now, which is it's it's what I love, but um, it's it's definitely going more that way. But then still have that like competitive side to me that wants to go do the contest and stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm slowing down doing some doing contests. I'm not chasing every single one that's going on anymore, or like every single QS and all that. So uh, yeah, it's kind of picking and choosing the ones I want to do and it kind of makes it better. It keeps it fun. It keeps you wanting to go do it rather than getting burnt out. I find so, um, yeah, it's keeping me on top of my game. I hope for both sides of everything, like keeping your performance game is going to benefit your, your slab surfing and all that too. So, um, yeah, I guess I want to be able to do both all the time. And, but it definitely is things are veering a lot more towards free surfing this last year or two. Well, all the content I've seen has just been outstanding. So I, I look forward to seeing more of it. Uh, you, you are, you are the f- uh, focusing on Tahiti for the Olympics. Is that is that right? Yeah. So that's the Olympics are on in Tahiti now, and that's what I'm going to Puerto Rico for. Um, the like the ISA Worlds, which is the qualifier to get into that contest. So that's kind of the main goal for the next couple of months is to try to get there, which is good because it balances pretty well with chasing slabs and doing contests <laughs> as a as a champion how do you keep your mental fitness together what is your routine do you have um a structure uh, my fitness or um i let, let's start first with the, the mind because that controls everything um how, how do you how do you organize it it definitely is pretty difficult like obviously surfing you're getting heaps and ups and uh, heaps of ups and downs and it is kind of it's pretty gets pretty difficult to manage all the downs sometimes but um yeah i guess you get a lot more downs in surfing than you get ups uh so it's just learning how to balance it and yeah you might have one or two days that you're not feeling great and after something goes wrong or whatever but uh yeah i keep i guess you just kind of have to take a little break take a step back from it and then you're like, oh, I do. I still, still love it. I like, I miss it that much. Like a lot of time, I'll take a couple of days off just to remember, like, the froth and get it all back. Just so you're like, oh, fuck yeah, it still is the best thing in the world to be able to go do it. <laughs> Tell us a little about a little bit about the the competition mindset and how it is that that you do love competition so much because uh, I'm a I'm a competitor myself in other arenas and like. Uh, there's something about it and i would like to to know from you because you know a lot of people that they they don't like the competition part of it but um to to want to win so bad um what what is what what does that live inside you like uh i don't know it's pretty hard like to put a full pinpoint on what it is inside me that makes me want to win all the time i guess my whole life i've been competitive and at every single sport I've done, I've played all sports and I've always wanted to be the best and, and that, uh, and I've just, I love competing. It, it betters. Yeah. You, you're like more like it gives you a, a goal to like, yeah, I want to get whatever this and this and you set whatever with surfing, you're going and surfing with all these other guys, a small little beach and you see all the like guys there that it, it really betters your surfing and it like you're growing with that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I'm just super competitive and absolutely everything, even in like my free surfs, there'll be me and the boys will be out just having fun. And, and like with my, we even with my competing 
I do just try and keep it super fun and like fun and lighthearted, but whatever. Um, but like we'll be out on like even at Molly, me and like one of the other boys here, Noah. He knows I'm like super competitive and like he'll like get a really good one at Molly and he'll be like, oh, I'm winning the heat. I'm winning the heat. You're going to have to back it up. And then like I'll get one and he'll get another. And it's like a, there's like a back and forth all the time. And it's like it's just a healthy competition. Like and it's going to make you better and push you in bigger stuff and all that, too. And yeah, being having just keeping it fun and all that is kind of what I focus on mostly. And how how is a um, you know surfing is so artistic and there's a lot of nuance. How do you deal with say subjective judging uh, when you for for instance you had that um, you went to you got second in in the European Championships uh, that was a very close final heat as I understand it like like how y- you and the other guy could have been number one and how does the subjective nature of surfing like how do you deal with that as a competitor. The subjectiveness of judging is definitely one of the toughest things to deal with. Like, you get it in every contest, and like, yeah, I that one at the Europeans was a pretty. It was a pretty tough one for me. I like obviously thought, obviously I didn't see his waves, but when I came out of the water, I was like, oh, I, I got some pretty good waves. I was pretty glad that I came second, and I got out, and everyone was like, oh, there's no way that he bet you there, like. Everyone on the beach is like, oh, you should have won that. You should have won that. But I guess it's human error, really. Like, it's they're not computers. There's there's going to be whatever, if it is bias, if it is personal preference, like, it's all going to come into play. Um, and it, it just happens, and it happens in every heat. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. It happens on the CT. You're going to get, obviously, what so one person thinks is good and one thing – another person's going to see being better in another so it's tough and you just have to roll with it and yeah you can't change the judge's mind so um it's yeah it's definitely hard but yeah it's just what happens in the sport of surfing i don't know if it, how it'll ever change but uh yeah it's kind of how it is um take us to the beginning your your dad as i understand it um got you on a knee board and that's that was your entry entry board into into stand-up surfing um uh, g- give us your your earliest recollection of, of surfing and and how you just fell in love with it yeah it's pretty funny like i did start on the knee board my dad is like a full knee board he he started surfing up in bundor and he's from like up there and um when he was in his 20s and there wasn't very many people surfing there it was at the time there were only a few of them but um yeah, he got me into surfing, like brought us out every once or once or twice during the summer, like when we were whatever, five, six, seven. You'd go out one day, one day every summer and just to kind of get a feel, get used to the water. And then I kind of remember, like, I think it was like summer when I was like nine, I reckon, that he pushed me in one day on a wave on his kneeboard and like was the first time like not riding like a green wave like the face of a wave i remember that i don't know why it was just one of those memories that still like still remember and kind of from then on it was just like oh i want to i just obviously i even as a kid subconsciously you're like oh i want to go get that feeling again and again so like just started from that day and i think and yeah the next summer i went out heaps like every day during the summer and then that winter from when I was 10 just kept going out every weekend after school whenever it was possible and it was just like pretty much took over my whole life of wanting to go surfing I quit all my other sports and yeah for a couple of years I was still riding my dad's kneeboards it was pretty funny like I was doing some junior contests riding dad's kneeboards and stuff and uh they worked well they're like they're quite short like 5'8 but they're super wide and super stable so kind of a perfect thing to learn on when you're a kid um and then yeah i suppose it's just continued on ever since that <laughs> and i've been lucky enough to be able to make it into a career yeah uh so what is the the the, the culture of ireland as far as surfing goes because y- you from the outside like you have beautiful waves it seems like there's waves everywhere but it doesn't seem like there's like heaps and lots of people surfing 
Um, the culture seems very small and tight and close knit. Um, tell us a little bit about, I guess, the, the history of the evolution, where it is and where do you think it's going? Yeah, I guess like surfing in Ireland, it started back in the 60s, I think, like, like even before my dad started surfing, there was a, like a group of surfers that were, so I think there was like four or five of them around the country and then they kind of went to all the different places and I got more and more people into it and, and that. And yeah, it's it's obviously growing still in Ireland. It's getting bigger and bigger. And as you, you can see it in the lineups, they're getting busier, but it's still pretty quiet here. But for a pretty good reason, I think, too, because, yeah, you'll see that it's like, you see the photos, oh, today was epic, yesterday was epic, or that week was that one day was six but like you can have a month straight where it's unsurfable pretty much where there's just like sideways rain like the worst winds no like just crazy storms and like i've had friends that have come here and they're like they've stayed for a month and haven't surfed and like there it's just like it's that kind of the way it's that kind of place that like you could come for a week just a random week and score the best lives of your life and then you can come for a month and not even surf. And I guess that's what's keeping it quiet is because it's so hard and so fickle to score that like even a perfect chart can pop up and people are messaging me being like, oh, it's going to be pumping tomorrow, isn't it? I'm like, oh, maybe like, fuck, I don't know. It, like there's a good chance it might not be like even on like the most perfect, perfect chart, things can still be weird They're like, yeah there's a lot of stuff that there's a lot of factors that can go wrong with the waves here it's a weird place like super wind affected all this stuff and which is good because yeah it keeps the keeps the crowds empty and yeah like you said the the community it's quite small we like i pretty much know 90 percent of the people in the water any day like if you'll know who they are like you know them say hello to them you might not be best friends with everybody in the water but like you know everybody say hello to her or whatever uh even no matter where you are in the country i can drive four hours south down to cork or whatever and meet people that i'd like oh yeah you know i'm like friends with this guy and friends with this guy and like everyone knows everybody that surfs it's pretty funny like it's not like anywhere else in the world like that um but yeah i think in the next couple of years it's gonna grow again because there's a lot more juniors into it like when I was a kid, there was like me and maybe two or three others my age that were surfing, like kind of in this area, in the whole country, there might've been six of us that at every contest when we were like under 14, under 16, under 18. But now there's like the the junior contests are like, they they have to like separate, like do under 14s, under 16s, one weekend, under 18s, another weekend, because there's so much, it's hard to get it all done in the weekend. Um, so yeah, it's it's going in the right direction, and hopefully it uh, it leads to some amazing some amazing service from Ireland, and yeah, things keep going and keep uh, keep expanding here. It, it's pretty good. Well, you're a great idol for the kids, and I'm I'm sure that it's just going to be a factory coming out because the the landscape just looks uh, like it is a it is a place of just waves on corners. So I, I kind of want to go there next, as far as the landscape goes, what, what is um, the, uh, the topography like around the Island? So you talk about consistency, you're on the, the, um, the Northwest of, of the Island, correct? That, yeah, that's yeah. where uh, uh, Strand Hill beach Sligo. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so, is that like the wave mecca or does, is it is it all over the, the, the coast around the whole thing? It's pretty much like anywhere from tip of the country, the whole west coast down to the south tip. You're getting, there's waves everywhere. Like there might there's there's always like fun there's fun beach breaks, there's fun point breaks, like absolutely scattered all over the place. And like that work on different wind directions, work on different swell directions because it's so so many jagged outcrops and like yeah there's all weird nooks and crannies around the island um and then like like there's like the east coast that even gets waves on like certain types of swells and it can be flat there for months but like there does be waves over there sometimes and it gets fun too but uh 
yeah, the main zone for me anyway is like Strand Hill. You've got like Bundoran twenty minutes away from me up north, East Key twenty minutes down south, and it's like they work different swell directions, they work different winds, so it's kinda like the main spot for consistency of waves for me, I think. Yeah, this this little zone that we live in. While while we're talking about landscape, what is your favorite uh, spot to get to the beach? It, it seems like every spot has its own unique path to to the wave, and you got to get to the wave. What what spot in your mind brings you like the most pleasure to get to the to get to that wave? Well, uh, I get. Well, I don't know if it brings me the most pleasure. It probably brings me the most pain. But uh, the the walk down to like the cliffs of Moher is it's one of the most beautiful walks you'll ever do never mind even just going down to a wave like it's that big right hander you see Eileen's underneath the cliffs of Moher it's it's next level like you walk down the little go trail down go trail down the cliff and yeah you, it's crazy and then you paddle out around the corner of the of this huge sea stack down the bottom of like the biggest cliffs in Europe and you just see this mental right hander like barreling towards you there's there's not really anywhere else in the world I could imagine there's somewhere that is that picturesque and that beautiful and yeah that's probably up there I reckon with the best place you can walk down and, and paddle out there so my, that's that's a beautiful picture you paint now what spot when you're in the water I want I want to know from your from your perspective what aesthetic are you, do you get out there and you're just like whoa this is this is the fluid I like being in what what are those conditions like and when are when are you popping off uh I don't know it's, it's, there's a, there's a lot of different places that like suppose the rare days that we get where you get that light offshore and there's sun and it's crisp you're out there, you got the sun shining on your face, there's like a little bit of heat in it. Even if it is zero degrees, the sun still gives you a little heat and yeah, just not when the water's like not choppy, like we can get offshore quite a lot, but it could be like howling and still choppy. But those days where it's just sunny, light, light offshores and nearly glassy, which yeah, you might get one or two of them a year. Uh they're kind of the days that you live for and yeah when you're out there looking back at you could be looking back at some amazing landscapes like the cliffs of moher or like lovely mountains in the in the fire like it's it's pretty next level so sick so sick so i, I saw this video you did where you you uh were given a bunch of different surfboard shapers and you you tried out all their different boards and you tried to guess who was who and culturally i thought that was a really beautiful thing and the specimens that they presented you with were all so unique and the way you surfed them was just incredible and i'm i'm thinking like you know what what is the board that you're you get your hands on and you're you're just throthing over it what what does that look like yeah, that that uh that video we did is pretty cool. Like uh, we kind of talked since of what stab do with their stab in the dark and their like acid, whatever their thing is the acid test. Um, but we wanted to do like kind of just to showcase the Irish shapers that we have here. It was like a uh, local little media company put it together. and They wanted to showcase what the Irish shapers have to offer. Um, because it's pretty small market that they have they wanted to help just promote them and stuff and yeah it, it was definitely mad like there was some crazy boards in there that i've never surfed before like asims like little mini like bars of soap kind of thing and yeah they were super fun but like for me trying to get obviously get into like having more fun on 20s and stuff but for me just as that like my full high performance shortboard that like my shaper christian bradley shapes me is like that's the thing. If I get a magic one of that, there's nothing else I'd rather go surf. Like, obviously, I'll go have fun on a 20 sometimes and and that. But, yeah, being on a truster and just a magic truster for me, there's nothing better. It just makes you want to go surf all the time. Where do you like the foam in that magic thruster? How do you com and how do you communicate that to your shaper? And and give it, give him one more shout out. I want to I want to be sure we we talk about him. 
Yeah, so my shaper is Christian Bradley. He, the Bradley surfboards, like he's from, well, he's Australian, or Australian Tasmanian, and uh, yeah, I started only only riding for them in the last year, but um, it's been amazing. Like every board I've gotten from him has been like really good, and given like the back and forth of all his knowledge that he has, like he's shaped under like CI. He used to shape Slater's boards and stuff under CI years ago. And uh, the knowledge he has, it's pretty mental. Like, I'd be like, oh, this is what I feel from this one. This is what I feel from this one. And he like, like he's like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly how they're meant to go. So I reckon I'm going to make you this. And it'll be like, a, it'll that will suit your surfing. And it has. I've just like, I found a model that I really like out of his boards. And. Literally every board I get, he can I can just pick it up and it's gonna go good. I can no, I can just jump straight on it and go for a surf and it's gonna be good. Stick. So I want to know this from you. When you're out in in the in the lineup on a short board session, it's 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 a high performance situation. Do you have um and you're going down the line, like how do you view that that moment and how much um uh, interplay is going on in, in your head do you have a bag of tricks you're going going for or uh like i'm sure there's a lot of maneuvers that you're you're trying to learn are you are you practicing those or are you going are you are you trying to perfect those ones that you're like i know i can i can land that every single time how, how does your um your mind work on a wave like that uh i'm not sure sometimes you can be surfing a wave and like things just happen and like it's just you're not even thinking of what you're going to do on the wave. You're just like, it's more just natural feel. And you're like, whatever the section might pop up and you, you'll do like a turn that you hadn't thought of or anything. But then like there's part, there's days where you're like, all right, if you're on like a perfect reef and you're like, okay, I know I've, I've whatever. I've had a couple of waves where I've done my three big turns or like two turns in an air. And then I'm like, right. Now I need to start mixing it up to like try and progress my progressive surf. And I suppose like my airs, my reverses, like tail slides, whatever, fin blows. And um, yeah, I guess that's just how it goes. It's like sometimes you're not thinking and then it just happens. And the other times you're there focused on like, all right, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to, sometimes I'll be getting ready for a contest. I'll be like, all right, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to just make sure every wave I do three big turns or today I'm going to go out and just focus, focus on trying to do a big air. If, if that's kind of what the waves are allowing. So kind of change what, what uh, depend on the wave, but uh, there definitely is always some kind of focus going in. So, so you're just a reader of the wave. You're focused there. Now I, I want to know, what the first time you you landed in air what was that do you remember that time can you bring us there because that like a lot of guys we can get up but we, we can't come down um and coming down is is, is what it's all about so like what tell us tell us how that happened how how it felt how old were you where were you uh yeah actually i actually do folly I was like, there was a point in my surfing where I started doing like heaps of like, just like grab rail reverses off closeout sections and all that. And I like, it was like my thing that I just tried on every single section was just a like grab rail reverse. Like, and then I was doing, I, I was actually doing some coaching over in England when I was, well, I must have been like 11, 11 or 12, I think, with, uh, with Joe Gray over there. And it's pretty funny. I still have the video of when I do land like my first air reverse. Like, I, like, freak out. Like, it, it wasn't very big or it wasn't anything, but uh, I remember just, like, a, all week all I was doing was grab rail reverses, and in this one section, I, like, did a grab rail reverse, but kind of launched out as well, and, yeah, it was it was a crazy good feeling, and even still, like, every time you land in air, it's a pretty mental feeling, like, it's it's... I I'll have sessions where I won't land an air, and then by the next one, the next day you'll go out and you'll land heat. So it uh, it's still like one of the best feelings in the world landing a big air. It, uh, it's pretty sick. <laughs>
Yeah. So, so this morning you, you landed a uh, backside air reverse. I saw your storyboard um, bring us to today's most recent um, uh, session there where you, where you, where you landed that, like when you were go, for instance, where you, when you were going down the line, were you thinking, Oh, here we go. Like, how did that go? Uh, yeah. Today, like I really like doing airs really wasn't in my head. I was literally just going out just to try and surf like the waves were that bad. And, that little section just kind of stood up, gave a little crumble, and yeah, like I was pumping down the line. I was like, "Oh, I might try like a little blow tail, like see how it goes." And it ended up like popping out a little bit more than I thought. And um, yeah, I was I was stopped even on like doing that little air on a little two foot wave. So yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool, and it, it made the session like today. I was having a terrible surf and terrible waves, but. I did that one little air and I, I came back in super stoked. So it was pretty good. Sick, yeah. And I think I read your dad shot that from the cliff or is that? Yeah. Shoot. Dad, dad gets out there on the handy cam all the time. Shooting all the, all those uh, bad days at the beach in the snow and the rain. He, uh, he, he, he loves it. He comes most of the time with me when I'm going surfing and shoots on the handy cam and, that's kind of where I started. I made a couple of my first little edits, all just um, dad's handy camps from like winters around the place. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. Everyone, everyone around here loves it. Like, it's pretty funny. He's like, he's pretty shaky. He doesn't have a good tripod or anything, but, uh, uh, and he comes out with some, with some good commentary on in the background of some of the clips. So it's pretty funny when you post them, everyone loves it. What a legend. That's so sick. So sick. Uh, so, what what's your um what's your thought on on uh, pools uh, do you do, have you visited any and how ha, ha, as a man uh, of ripping of air ha, if you have how how was it surfing in something so consistent uh the only pool i've been to is the one in bristol in england um and it's fun like we went there on a trip at rip curl and when it just opened and like at the start you're frothing it's like such a novelty it's cool and we surfed i think the first day we surfed it for eight hours like all the different settings and stuff and by the end of it i was kind of over it like it's like it's sick it's super fun and if you live in a place where there's no waves the best thing in the world allows you to go surfing and that but there's it's it is it's a novelty and Obviously, I've never been to Slater's Wave Pool or any of those ones in America because those things look next level. They look a bit more ocean-like, I suppose, and give those like real good air sections or get really good like kind of bigger barrels. And um, yeah, I would love to be able to go try them out and be able to compare them to the ocean. But uh, yeah, for me, not being a, a wave pool expert on any of the other ones, it's 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 a novelty and. If I if I live somewhere where there was no waves, it'd be the best thing in the world. But yeah, still doesn't really compare to ocean waves. <laughs> yeah, so, so the the ocean is is king. Uh, t- what is it about the ocean that you love so much? What is it about that natural space that really gets you in, in your soul? Uh, I guess it it kind of is the unpredictability of it. Yeah, I suppose like what you're in for when you take off on a wave like some waves you take off and like it's not a hollow wave you could still unexpectedly get a really good barrel down the line and that's going to make you happier than anything like and it's, it's that unpredictability of it that it makes it a lot more fun it makes it whatever like obviously the pool is good for training and that predictability of I'm going to do this turn here. I'm going to work on that turn. I'm going to do and just do it over and over and over again. But to me, it gets boring after a while. Whereas the ocean throws some mad things at you and just keeps it a lot more interesting and a lot more fun. So are are you paddling out every day for exercise or when there's not um, great waves, are are you finding yourself um, with a, a, a different physical regimen? And um, what is that physical regimen? Yeah, so I do try and surf like as much as possible. Like today, like it was, today was a bit of just going in for a bit of exercise. But I do, if I'm not surfing, I'm in the gym pretty much every day. I'm not surfing. Like I've only really started in the gym in the last year or so, and I you feel such a difference of 
how much stronger you feel, how much better it is. Like, and since that, I've I've grown a lot for it. And yeah, pretty much if I'm not surfing, I'm in the gym doing some form of exercise. And what what kind of uh, workouts are are you are you doing? Kind of like everything, really, just strengthening like your legs, your core, like your rotational stuff, like kind of like surf specific, but then it's pretty general at the same time. So like it's just strengthening conditioning and just making sure you're going to be strong and ready to go and be able to prevent injuries as well. I had a, I had a couple of years there where I was injured two winters back to back. So a lot of it can, is kind of preventative of being injured as well. So strengthening the right things that, uh that help yeah you prolong your surfing <laughs> yeah you're a top level professional athlete what, what's uh your nutrition game like how how uh how do you focus on that uh, i i'm i've in the last couple of years i've started kind of a lot more focusing on my nutrition i used to be pretty bad at what i used to eat like when i was younger i used to just shovel whatever i could get into me and like like whatever fast food takeaways and stuff but now i like i'm i'm a lot more on top of it like i like i don't have what it like one specific diet i like just keep it like balanced everything get like your fruit and veg in a day every day your your proteins in every day your carbs and just like keep it balanced and yeah i try and eat as healthy as possible but like you got to enjoy yourself too so uh, you got you got you got to get your takeaways in every once in a while your little cakes and all that so yeah it's pretty good just trying to find a good balance of it really and just making sure that it's right to give you the right amount of energy to go surfing every day pretty much and yeah just focusing on that really what kind of program do you have uh eating wise before a big session uh at mulgamore or even a, a, a regular session where you're free surfing regular waves uh i i know a lot of people that don't like eating before they go surfing like i know a lot of that is but for me i i have to eat like i if i don't eat before i go surf i feel weak i feel tired and i don't know what that is but i'll have to like eat like a proper meal like not like a huge meal but like whatever if i was going if i was having breakfast i'd have like a bit of fruit bit of porridge and that that'd be my breakfast and or if it was lunch and I was going for a surf after lunch, I'd have like a chicken bed wrap and that just to kind of keep you fuel, not like overly full, but just like you have enough in you to keep you fueled for the session. Great knowledge for, for, for everyone out there for sure. What, what is the, uh, the big wave that, that that you want first that you've been to aside from Mulgamore, like what out outside of Ireland, what's like the next spot that you've surfed where you're like, oh, that was that was legit. Uh, I don't know, like it's not like the biggest wave in the world, but there's that wave. We go to Lanzarote every year for uh, the Kamau contest, um, and it's like it's pretty much as close to like surf and pipe as you'll get, like we had it this year and it was like 10 foot like pumping and it was like literally identical to what pipe would be like but less busy and all that it just doesn't it's not that consistent over there it's the winds are variable like it's an island in the canaries there's winds coming from everywhere in the middle of the atlantic but uh yeah that's probably right now is one of my favorite waves in europe anyway that i've been to recently and it's it's proper it's it's sick uh, so sick. Yes. You you have so much experience in that part of the world. I want to hone a little bit more on that. As, aside from that spot, what are some other locations where you're like, Europe's got it going on, guys? Yeah, like for Europe is, there's kind of time of year. I don't see anywhere else better in the world than Europe. Like for me, everyone, you see everyone going to Hawaii and all that. But like I, I went to Hawaii when I was 19. I don't ever really want to go back. It's just too busy and too hectic of the amount of people in the water like but here in europe it's it's epic like it, it gets busy and stuff but we've got like here you've got scotland there's crazy slabs up there you got portugal there's like whatever there's nazareth there's loads of 
big crazy slabs, epic beach breaks. Down to France has some crazy beaches. Even like Spain's got perfect reefs, perfect slabs, everything. And then like we've obviously got a lot of Europe that even quieter than Ireland that's a bit less explored. Like you've got Iceland and you've got some crazy waves in Norway and all those places that they don't get good very often, but there is some mental, mental waves and there are definitely some places I want to explore a bit more as well. Where where is your frontier? Where are you thinking that that you need to to, to get to on it, next? What what's kind of your uh your your golden ball? Uh, I don't know. There's a couple of places I have in mind I want to try. There's a couple of slabs in Portugal I really I've been looking at for the last couple of years. I haven't had the opportunity to go yet. Just because uh, they work on kind of similar charts that we get waves here at Mali. So there's a couple of really big left slabs down there that I want to try and get. And um, then, yeah, some, to be honest, actually one of the places I really want to go is, um, is New York and New Jersey. Like I seen the swell that was over there in the last couple of weeks. I was like, oh, that place looks so fun. Like. And it's something different, like something so different to what we get here. That it's just that's one place I really want to go in the next in the next uh, year or two for as well. Oh, that's so sick! Yeah, I'm down here in North Carolina, so that's uh, yeah, about yeah. six seven hours away. And um, that footage out of there was was absolutely in, in, insane. You you were correct. Uh, very slabby, yeah. right? Yeah, slabby, slabby on some beaches. Eh? It was pretty sick. You guys must have had some good waves up by you then as well. If it was, yeah, uh, yeah, it's been a been a really good winter. Yeah, I'm I'm in Wrightsville Beach, and we have a, a spot called Masonboro. In fact, our our uh, like top big wave surfer from here, Mason Barnes, was with you uh, at Mulga yeah. a couple weeks ago, and uh, yeah, yeah, he and shot a, a photo of him. That's kind of how how you got on on my mind. But um, yeah, Mason, Mason's our dude out here. Yeah, Mason's cool. Eh? I met him. And he was there in Lanzarote with us for that contest, and was chatting with him. And uh, he was super nice. He like flew to Ireland directly from Lanzarote after that contest, and yeah, used one of my boards and stuff for that for that oh, uh, sick. For that web. <laughs> yeah. So so you're yeah. you're the key to to Mason getting to Mulgamore. That's epic. <laughs> yeah, he borrowed one of my boards for that one. <laughs> yeah, every everyone here is so proud of him. Like like we're we are all just hooting. So yeah, and, and sick. The, the green, so beautiful, so beautiful. And your waves, of course, also. So thank you for 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 sharing uh the waves. No, oh, good. Wait, I love it when everyone comes. Like obviously, if there's like 20 guys coming, you're like, oh fuck, it's gonna be busy. But when it's not that many guys, I love it when everyone comes. It like it pushes us like sometimes like having the international guys come, it's gonna push you to be go bigger and get bigger ones when they're here. So it's good. Well, they also need you to show them how, where to sit, where to be, like <laughs> how to how to do it. So you're you're the guru. Yeah, Mason was like like he he said he'd been trying to get that way for so long because the the guy's mental. He he's everywhere. But, yeah, um, yeah, he's sick. He's good. Yeah, yeah it, was good. it was good. to see him get one there for sure. So I uh, you kind of got my mind going north. You know, I've seen a lot of footage um, out of Iceland. Uh, uh, Spencer Frost and and um, Guy, uh, they went up to uh, Kamchatka, and I don't know if you saw that footage um, out, out of Russia. So it lo- it seems like like people are are going colder and colder. Uh, what 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 are you what are you hearing about where you need to go in that direction? Yeah, exactly. I did actually watch that one that the boys did in Kamchatka. I only watched it there recently, actually last week, <laughs> but. Um... Yeah, then they did the one in Iceland and Scotland, and there a bit, little bit of that was shot here. Um, so I, I was surfing with them a little bit on that trip when they were here, uh, which was cool. But um, yeah, for me, like going more north is definitely Iceland is somewhere I've been, and we didn't score it because it's it's super hard to get right with the winds and stuff. But we've seen some setups and. And that, and that's a place I really want to go back and try try score some of the really good slabs they have. And uh, and then I've heard I've heard about a couple of a couple of waves in Norway that I've been talking to a couple of guys up there about trying to get a trip going as well. So 
that's kind of another place that would be super cool. And I guess, yeah, everyone's starting to go north and colder. Just places are getting too crowded for people, so they want to go find some empty waves. And, yeah, go cold is a place you're gonna is the way you're gonna find that. And and you know you refer to your own spot how the consistency and that and that's really the the hallmark of all these places. Uh, speak to to the idea of that like when you decide to to do something like that and go to a frontier spot, how you need to almost plant yourself there for a month or so. And um, what does that look like logistically for a person in, in your position? Yeah, like it's pretty hard, like, like figure out when those places are going to be good. Like I said, like, yeah, people come here last minute and it, it's terrible. Like, and sometimes I've done trips and, like the super last minute strike missions and like they, the morning the morning before the swell you're like oh is it going to be good is it going to be good is it going to change like and then we're like all right we'll do it pull the trigger drive to the airport that like pack that hour drive to the airport fly out two hours later and like get there and it's like a super rush super last minute and i've had trips go wrong that try some changed again and they've gone bad like it's just kind of what happens and it is quite hard to go and park up somewhere like that for a month or two. Like obviously you've got, you've got whatever commitments at home or commitments to go on other trips and all this stuff. But um, yeah, logistically it's pretty hard to pull triggers on swells and there's obviously swells that you don't go on then that are epic. And it's, it's such a hard one where it's a hard, hard one to call always whether it's going to work out or not. Totally. Totally. Uh, and, and how is that feeling when you, uh, when, when you don't score it and you put in so much effort? It's, it's pretty heartbreaking when you do that. I mean, we go on, it's always fun. Like it's always like me and my friends, like whatever Connor, I'm our filmer, Clem, like we're always going, we're always having a good time no matter what, like just having a crack or whatever. But, obviously you're putting a lot of money into it and effort that when it doesn't come off that it is a bit heartbreaking but you still go surf you still have fun and try and make something out of it or even if it's not going to be what you expected uh, you still got to try and make something and just make it fun yeah that's kind of kind of what happens and i guess you can't score every time and that's what kind of makes you keep chasing it is that if you score it every time you get bored of it so if you uh, you gotta keep chasing it and hoping that you're gonna you're gonna get it perfect someday. Okay, so so we went through the negative. I wanted to go to the extreme positive. What's the one session that goes right to your mind where you're like, oh, all that was so worth it, and it's so epic right now. I can't even believe I'm alive. Uh, yeah, we've had a couple like that. Like, to be honest, the most sessions I've had like that have been in Ireland. And they're like even going on some missions in Ireland, it's it's a mission. Like we've had, like you have to drive pretty far with jet skis, and then like drive on the skis in the in the water for like an hour or so to get to this spot. And like, yeah, we've had one or two that like I remember just the drive over on the jet ski was so cold that like my hands and like everything was just in absolute agony, and then like. I, like we were like no nah, like let's just turn back it's too much it's too much and we got out there and it was like the best day ever no one around and scored like epic waves all day just just me and one of me and connor and stuff so it was those days is what you live for and yeah you come back out of the water and get jet ski out of the water and get warmed up and you're like wow that was the best day ever i, I can't believe we just that just happened so it's pretty good like that so in that session, how did you how did you eventually warm up and turn your mind around? And be like, okay, I got this super consequential thing I gotta go do, and uh, like, do you just rise to the occasion? Uh, yeah, I guess like a lot of the times when you rock up on a jet ski to like these waves, and like there's nobody else in the water, like we're just like, yeah, come on, we'll go try a few, like whatever. We're going, we're having like a sick time, thinking we're getting like really good like we're like stoked like real stoked on the barrels and like getting spat out and we're like frothing out and then you like you get out of the water and we one day we got out of the water drove back to this to the harbor 
and like the guy Clem who was filming came down to the rocks and he was like oh my god that was the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life and we were like yeah like it was sick like it was super fun like like how big we were like how big did they look and he was like they were fucking massive like and we were just like we were like nah it wasn't that big like was it and that wasn't until like we went back to his house and like sat in front of the computer like warmed up and like watched the clips and we were like holy shit it was actually like massive that we like we couldn't believe it and like those days just like are the best days because you're not like you don't think it's that big and then you're stalked anyway and then you like you get the same stalk again after watching the clips because you're like holy shit that was way bigger than i thought <laughs> speak to that stoke well like what 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 is that what is that feeling well i don't know it's just full happiness like nothing can really take it out of you like you're just buzzing like everything it's just that full high that you get like whatever even surfing or watching like you get full high and like takes a while to come down from it. it's hard to go to sleep sometimes after those those kind of days where you're full stopped <laughs> so sick so sick so what what's your position on um on flotation uh do you use it uh and um for those who might not know what i'm talking about uh impact vests like uh they look like they would help out a lot but they also look like they'd be cumbersome uh especially if you're if you're paddling yeah i definitely like at my more and stuff i'll always have impact suit on under your wetsuits um i don't find impact suits not too hard to paddle with it's they have no arm like it's just a little like no arm thing so that's all right um it's like having like a full inflation vest sometimes i find way too bulky on my shoulders and i can't paddle so like if we're paddling at Molly, I'll I usually won't wear an inflation vest. I'll just like just go with the impact suit, and it's having an impact suit on out of the place like Molly is super important. Like how hard you hit the water, it's mental how much they take the impact out. Like if if you aren't wearing one of those suits, like you get the air knocked out of you straight away, and then you've got like the whole wipeout to deal with after. So. They do save a lot of that. Like I've had a couple of mad wipeouts and they just take all the like, you don't get that winded feeling. You don't get that kind of thing when you hit the water slapped. So it is, they're very important. And then obviously when we're towing and it's massive, those really, really big days, I'll put an inflation vest on. Like one that you can pull and inflate. So like, cause you do get pushed real deep out at Molly. I've had a couple of two wave hold downs out there and, yeah, it, it is quite important on those days that you have uh, inflation that if, if things do go fully wrong, that you, you have that last last resort to be able to shoot you back up to the surface. What's the story on that two-wave hold down? Uh, actually, the two-wave hold down I had was the worst one I ever had was actually a paddle day at Molly. And I pulled into the barrel, if, like I fell in the barrel. And it wasn't actually that wave that did it. My leash out of my leash plug broke out of my board. And I was just so I had no board. I was just like chilling there, like in the impact zone and I looked around and there was like this huge one behind me that someone had towed on the next wave. And I was just sitting there right on the impact of I started swimming out to try and get through the wave to like dive under it, but I ended up in the worst spot that a wave landed right on my head and just pushed me so so deep and then i was like i was swimming back up and i was like oh there's i could i could just had that feeling i was like okay there's gonna be i'm not gonna get up before this next wave hits me so this was like the third wave of the set and i was like okay i'm not gonna do it so i just stopped and just let myself flow and i just got to just the same energy i just got to the top and like my eyes were just above the water, like my mouth didn't come up, and the next wave just rolled me. And then I wasn't too bad. Like obviously, two wave hold down isn't great, but I kind of just kept relaxed and knew that I could do it. I've obviously have done like your breath holds and all that, so I just kind of chilled out and knew it was going to be all right. And then by the time that wave had rolled over me, I was kind of more in the channel. And then jet ski kind of came and got me. So it was all right. But uh, yeah, definitely a pretty scary experience. 
gnarly, gnarly. What's your position? Um, excuse me. What's your position on helmets? For sure, helmets are pretty important. I I struggle to wear them. I try. I've tried, and that does like super shallow slabs. It's they're they're important. If you hit your head off the reef, it's that that can just kill you instantly. Like I know it's happened to a couple of guys around the world. Everywhere they've smashed their heads, and it's it's hectic. But I don't know. I sh- I struggle with it. I find it like real heavy and like disorientating when I have a helmet on. I guess here we're pretty lucky. You have a HUD. It's not a full helmet, but there's definitely a, a essence of protection there. So the HUD helps, obviously. But yeah, I, um, it's definitely something that is important. And hopefully I can figure out how to wear one and not be disorientated. Yeah, it seems like like with a hood and a helmet, that would just be too much stuff to... Yeah, you're so full much, bobblehead. So much of the balancing is is in your ears. And the feeling. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is a tactic. So, so Rip Curl's your sponsor. Uh, wetsuit progression just in your lifetime um, has has gone crazy, which probably has a lot to do with how there's more people in the water in Ireland. Uh, speak to the wetsuits uh, that you're using right now uh, with Rip Curl. And um, what are what are the, the why are they why are they the best stuff out? Yeah, for sure. Like this year, Rip Curl just brought out um, a fusion wetsuit. And like a lot of the last couple of years, like Rip Curl, they had like their E bomb and they had their, um, they had their, their flash bomb heat seeker. Um, and I found this year with the fusion, it's just like the best happy medium of warmth and, and, uh, and flexibility. Like they're so warm. I've been like too warm in the water out here a, a lot, and but you still have the freedom of feeling like you can paddle or whatever, and it's amazing. Like, I you can go to put, go to the Canary surfing a tree too, and then come back and jump in a five mil and not feel crazy restricted or crazy slow and sluggish. So just and then be super warm. So yeah, for me, I'm super lucky that I have rip that do sponsor me and they make what i think to be the best right too for sure it's it's epic sick so like kids out there they, they want to be like you they want to get sponsored what kind of recommendations do you give to the kids who want to take the path that you've gone down as far as uh doing the doing the comps getting sponsored what, what's their what's their game plan what does that look like I guess for me, even when I was younger, things have changed a lot with like the whole social media and stuff. Like when I was a kid, my thing was I was going doing comps, got some good results, and um, uh, was at a couple of comps that there was a couple of team managers at, and they recognized me, and like that was kind of how I got my a lot of my sponsorships. Um, and now there's a lot of emphasis on like the social media, like your Instagram and stuff, but like. I think for kids is yeah, do uh, do as good as you can your contest and do your social media, but like just try and keep it as fun as possible. I think, and as long as you're keeping having it fun, all that and you'll improve more, and those things will come, and like the sponsors will come once you're posting good sick clips on Instagram of you're having fun out there, whatever, or doing a couple of good contest results, like. I think just the main thing for a lot of kids is to just make sure that they keep it fun. Sick. And on the same note, you you are you're the pro, you're the dude doing the action. You have to have a network of of guys who are taking videos and photos. Um so what is your as as the pro and you have a sick Instagram page guys, so check it out. Like like what is your social media game plan and how, it's almost a full-time job for you. I'm sure as far as promoting, cause, cause you, you got to do it. It's part of the deal. Like how, how do you go about um, doing that? And what's your philosophy? Yeah. Like it obviously it is part of the deal now, like promotion of, uh, of the brands and on that on Instagram and I enjoy it. Like I like it. I'll, I'll try to have fun with it as well. Like just post some funny stuff and then just kind of, keep the content consistent like this uh whatever it is even if it's like posting my dad's clips of like it might be terrible but 
terrible quality and shaky, but it's funny. It keeps people interacted and and that kind of stuff. And then I have like filmers that I work with, like Clem. I work with quite a lot here. He like films us heaps, and like any of the like bigger edits we've made over the last while have been filmed by him. And just kind of, it does get quite difficult trying to when you you're out at one of those sessions you get those clips and like trying to figure out what's the best way to distribute them what's the best way to do with them and this year i think we're gonna just try and make a couple of little smaller edits uh throughout the year of like specific swells or days or that kind of thing and um yeah it just kind of it seems like the way it's going people just want to see more and more consistent and kind of not they want to see like things nearly as they happen so like trying to get stuff out a little bit quicker of days and stuff is kind of the main thing we're going i'm going to try to do this year thick so what what clips i guess in modern times do you do you consume and really gets you like stoked what what is it that that other people get in big waves other people's tricks what do you like to see i watch a bit of everything really like i'll watch I do like I like like Nate and Florence's YouTube and stuff. It's like it's it's light, it's funny, it's there's mental waves and like that's kind of what I like watching. And like if there is a big swell coming, I like I watch guys like charging really hard and be like, oh right, yeah, like it's not hard. It's just like I just have to go do it. Like you just got to like a, a lot of the time it's a mental thing of on big days. Like so watching clips before big days of guys charging is kind of a good thing for me and it's like oh yeah it gets you psyched up gets you ready and just like you're like all right i just gotta go do it like i know i can do it so i just have to do it today growing up what was the 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 media the movie that really you look back on you're like man that really got me good uh uh a lot of the movies when i was young was like the young guns movies uh, they were always super sick. Uh, what was the other one? Those Modern Collective, Stranger Than Fiction. Those, like, all those ones, I had them all on DVD, which, like, you just had them on repeat all the time. Like, I really like Stranger Than Fiction. It was the one, like, they, like, they kind of, had, everyone had different sections, and they had, a like, kind of joking in and out of, like, saying things were, like, green screen and stuff. So it kind of, like, was funny, but it was a sick surf surf clip at the same time and i i really like that i like just how it was yeah like when you're a kid you want things to be funny and like enjoy them as well so that was one of that really stuck with me that i had on repeat a lot sick so what is the um i guess what what, what advice do you have um for for older people who want to get into big waves, I guess what say, you know, you, 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 you're, you think you can show up, but what, what's the starting place for someone who wants to take a bigger wave trajectory that might not be a Grom anymore? Uh, I guess just, uh, like you see a lot of, a lot of times you'll see people out at places and you're like, Oh, maybe they shouldn't be there and stuff. And like, I think for me, People in big waves, I think they should be able to surf small waves too. Like, you should be, like, you don't want to be out at Molly, go take a drop at, like, one of the other slabs down the road. I think, like, I hope that doesn't piss people off. But, like, uh, like for me, that's it. Like, Molly's so much more dangerous. Like, it might be a little easier to take off, but it's so much more dangerous. And, like, I think, yeah, like, you should be able to just, same when you're a kid, you have your your stepping stones of how to get there so i think it should be the same you should do the same as an adult like when you're older is like build yourself up get your training in and just make sure you're fully ready to go out there and not get hurt get injured or anything like that and yeah that you're able you're strong enough you're fit enough and your ability is there and make sure your stepping stones have been right and that's yeah i think that's the best way to do it same way as when you're a kid really and when you're pushing yourself personally, what's the line that you draw between deciding to say uh, paddle mulligamore uh, or uh, or uh, tow tow it? What's kind of what? How do you decide those two things? 
it kind of depends really like some days uh the tide can be a factor if the tide isn't super low it doesn't really have the like little chip shot that you can paddle into so that can be a factor and if there's no chip shot and it's just all on the slab we'll just go tow it um and then the wind can be another factor if it's like howling howling windy that makes it super difficult to paddle we'll we'll go tow as well but like for me i would always i'd always be paddle as much as possible like if it, if it's at all pad paddleable, I I'd, I'd rather try paddle than try tow. Towing sick and like yeah, you catch a million waves a session and you get like ten sick ones, but like that one mental one you get paddling is just it's a lot more rewarding. Like I don't know what it is, but it's it's uh, it's just different. Like it and yeah, paddling is my main focus of on bigger days. I think awesome. And is it is it that factor of you're doing it all yourself as as the individual, and wh- where does that 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 power lie? I suppose it is like there's just a lot more fear factor when you're going paddling. Like you're towing and put on a wave, and you don't really know how big it is. You don't know how it looks when it's coming in, and like it's that feeling that you get when that wave's standing up in front of you, whatever it is, ten. 15 20 foot standing up and you have to have that decision to like turn around and go and then when you do it and then make it out the end i guess it's just that sense of relief of surviving the happiness of surviving and all that comes into one and like the fear and everything and it all just combines into just uh yeah ultimate happiness i suppose so pa- paddling in stands as the most respectable thing that a that a big wave surfer can do uh, let me ask you this. So there was, I, I think, some recent controversy with a with a Guinness Book of World Records reading of a of a paddle in wave, biggest paddle wave ever. Um, does when when it is made, the drop is made, but there's a wipeout. Do you believe that that as the as a premier as a premier big wave surfer? Do you believe that is a counts as as the wave, or do you do you have to ride the wave out? Where do you stand on that subject? Mm, I don't know. It's is it a tough one because obviously I've never been to like Nazarene stuff. It's it's not what I'm into. Like yeah, surfing, I big waves and whatever. Like I wouldn't really class myself as a big wave surfer. I just want to try and go get as big a barrel as I possibly can. Whereas like Nazarene is like just riding the tallest wave possible. I suppose. Obviously, people are trying to get barrels and stuff, but those big, big days, it's just about riding the tallest thing possible. And it just, it's not something that appeals to me in that much. But so I don't know how to comment on it. Like, obviously, the guys yeah. are there are like, are like, oh, he made it to the bottom. So that's like, he made it to see how tall the whole wave was. So, like, it's a hard one. Like, is it when you get to the bottom? Is it when you fully ride out the back and like a lot of the time at Nazareth there they'll be riding out the back of the wave sideways like out the corner and then fall so is, is that made is that not made i don't know because i've never been out there like so, so so this is a very very deep philosophical point you're raising and it's like the mulgamore wave might not be as tall but it's square which makes it more gnarly and more aesthetically beautiful also from a side angle than say a, a Nazare wave that might be taller, but it's kind of like crumbling at the top. So um what what how how do you speak to that? I guess, yeah. To me to me, there's a lot more risk for less reward. <laughs> and that's just my personal opinion. Like obviously the guys that are there, the reward is mental for them. But like the risk of falling on one of those waves and drowning to just surf like the biggest mountain ever. I don't know. It's just not something that interests me that much. And maybe if I went and tried it, it would be something I'd get that feeling and love it. But I guess for me, there's just nothing, there's not more spectacular than getting spat out of a massive barrel. Like, and yeah, the, 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 the risk versus reward thing at Molly is there for me. I, I'm happy to go risk go get that massive barrel and try it but yeah nazare is just it's it's never appealed to me but maybe one day i'll go down and give it a go and never know i might end up loving it (laughs) sick 
So is Mugamore the, the 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 best slab in the world, or is there is there one out there that that you you've you've seen a picture of that you're like, oh, that might be better. I guess there's those videos you see of like uh, the cloud break when it was massive. Like those ones are pretty crazy, but. Like for me, of everything I've seen or been or surfed, Molly to me is like the best wave in the world. But for sure, it's going to be other people are going to have different opinions of where they've scored and where they haven't. So, yeah, but that's just my opinion of the days I've seen out there. Uh, but yeah, those old videos of Cloud Break Huge are, are pretty next level, too. Yeah, and I think you're referring to that one where Slater commentates, it's like the most epic Cloud Break ever. Um, that's, uh, that's some insane footage. Last question. And thank you so much for your time today yeah, yeah. And, and your willingness to speak to us. Uh, I know so many people are gonna just get so much out of this conversation. Um, Garaj, what, what's the meaning of life? Uh, meaning of life, oh, it's a hard one. I guess for me, it's, it's having fun. Like I just like, as long as I'm having fun and enjoying life, that's, that's it. Like I see a lot of stuff and like um, a lot of people are like, Oh, I'm going to like work as hard as I can now so I can enjoy my life later in life. But like for me, I'm like, well, I'm just going to try and enjoy life my whole time and just keep it fun the whole time. And I've been lucky enough that I've been able to do that. And yeah, that's the meaning of life for me is just enjoying it and having, keeping it as fun and loose as possible. Stick man. And you're, you're having a snow day. Thank you again for for joining us on your snow day. And uh, what what's up uh, next for you this evening? I know the the sun's setting. Uh, what's for dinner? It's it's pretty dark. Yeah, it gets dark early here. It's dark from the last two or three hours, I think. But uh, don't know. I think my girlfriend's cooking up some dinner outside, and we'll see. It. Hopefully, she's cooked up something good. And yeah, just kind of chill out for the evening, and hopefully get some waves in the next couple of days. And yeah, that's kind of it. Just uh, yeah. Might be a swell coming soon, so hopefully, hopefully, there's a big swell soon too. Epic. Well, we can't wait to see you out there. We can't wait to to follow your 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 new clips coming out, and good luck uh, with the Olympics coming up. That's going to be really cool. Epic. Yeah. Cheers. Should be should be good fun. Thank you, Garage McDade. Thank you very much for joining us on episode 34, speaking from water. Uh, that is it, folks. Be sure to follow and um, have a great evening. Peace. Thank you, bro, again so much. You're a legend. Oh, good, oh, good. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, I have uh, a nightmare to deal with. <laughs> no, dude, no. And, and I hope my questions weren't too like like existential. But I'm I'm really trying to no, bring the good. People, yeah, I'm trying to bring the people to your 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 mindset because it's yeah, it's yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> epic, epic. Thank you. Cheers. And yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, I'll get over your side someday. Next yeah, dude. Too. Hey, you know, you talk about Jersey. Look at the Outer Banks. That that's up yeah, yeah. north of where I am. And man, they go they go just as slabby because it sticks way far out. If you look at the map, and it's I've all, seen. like Jersey is is has high rises and it's a lot of city. Outer Banks is like country desolate. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. That's that for sure. I need to get over there. Looks sick. <laughs> And how, you should let us know if you ever make it over this side of Ireland later. Oh, uh, bro, I you know my name. My name's Sean, you know, and Drew is yeah. my middle name. So I Irish lives deep in me. Like we're only two generations over here, and I go back, you know, to the the olden days. So uh, we're, we're blood, bro. <laughs> sick, sick, <laughs> epic, epic. <laughs> and, and, and tell your girlfriend thanks for the follow back, Sarah. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's how she's out there cook, out there cooking dinner. Smells good. Yeah. Great, great. Well, well y'all get, get to it. Thanks again for your time and um and good luck with the swell coming up. Epic. Cheers. We'll talk to you soon.